because in Puerto Rico in school, we would use every name we had. But, um, you know, um, my earliest memories of the music and, and you know, um, how it came into my life and, 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 and how it compelled me, even at an early age, you know, to, to in other words, I knew that this, this is what I wanted to do, even at an early age. Puerto Rico, Barrio Anones, a small town, a small part of a town. And I remember uh, my mother would tell me, throw the garbage out. And I would, I would love to do that, even though it was the fifth floor and I had to walk down and then walk 87 steps, because I counted them. Wow. I would count them, but on the way down and on the way up, I could hear the music seeping under the doors of people. Mm. As I went up, different kind of stuff was happening, mm. you know, so I was in my mind as a kid, <coughs> I was already so much interested in the music, and then I would watch my mother dance. My father was a preacher in the Pentecostal church, so he was totally against the dance now, because he brought that element from Puerto Rico, from my, that was my father's family that we were staying up there in that mountain. So he brought that element, but my mother loved to dance. Hmm. And, and my father came home from church one day and she was dancing to El Gran Combo and Pujale la Guja. And Pujale la Guja means push the needle because when the record gets stuck, crack, eh, crack, eh, crack, eh, and Pujale la Guja, push the needle so the record can keep on going. And, the, and they came out with a song and pull and pull and pull la aguja, and pull and pull and pull la aguja. Ese disco se rayo, ese disco se rayo, <laughs> right? And, and here's my mother, she's dancing with my older sister. And my father walks in from church. Ah, this is what you do? You don't go to church? Ah, and you're dancing all day and time. So he took the record player with speakers and everything and, and ripped it off the wall and threw them out the window through the backyard. With, with the record player and everything, went the Venetian blind. And of course, he broke the glass because he thought the window was open. He's a dummy, you know? <laughs> wow. So he throws all this stuff out the window. Now, I'm in the bathroom window looking out because they're fighting. So I stay away from them. And I'm looking out like this, and I see the record player and all the stuff and the speakers just floating down, almost in slow motion. And in my head, you know what was in my head? And pull and pull and pull la guja, pull and pull and pull la guja, crash! Wow. Bam! Then pieces. Wow. But it was too late because the bug was already in me. They couldn't take it away. But at that age, I didn't realize that yet until I became older, you know. You know, sasa meaning source, it's just an umbrella and a, and a word to, right? So I got to experience all that beautiful growth. In fact, I got to experience the Yankee Stadium. And when they played? And when they played at the Yankee Stadium in South Bronx. Right. And I'm sitting there in the second tier, the stage, and here's the Fania with the greatest people in the world, man. Mongo Santa Maria, you know, Jorge Santana and his band. You know, it was, it was a Latin thing. We were telling the world, we're here. 65,000 people. That's true. Predominantly Puerto Ricans at the time because that was the majority of Latinos that were at the time. Man, but at the same time, we're taking all over Osters Community College and putting chains on the doors. You know, we come from a small island, but we're very loud people. 
all of a sudden, Mongo Santa Maria is taking a solo on a tune called Congo Bongo. Mm -hmm. They had to finish the tune in the studio because the crowd, the energy, the drums, pull. There's a drum in every country. I don't care what country you come from. And the drum evokes your spirit and gives you this feeling of euphoria. And you ran, the people ran and stormed the stage when Mr. Nicky Mahreda tells me, Angel, all I had was the sticks left in my hands. They took everything from the stage. Wow. My timbales, symbol, everything was gone. This, it was like, whoa, slow motion. And they stormed the stage like ants on top of a sweet thing, on top of a piece of candy, you know? And the concert was over. Never again did a big arena like that rent any, anywhere to us for a concert. They refused until Madison Square Garden started to do it. Wow. And of course, Lehman College now, and, and you know, and a lot of venues and we recognize around the world, but that was, I, man, that's so fresh in my mind right now. And of course, Paco, who was a master bomba player, who knew, bomba is not just one rhythm, it's many rhythms. Mm -hmm. I remember um, doing a lot of uh, uh, rhythm called Sika and Yuba. Lero, um, uh, it, uh, um, there's other names like um, I, I can't I can't remember them right, right now, you know, uh, and the singing and the playing and the dancing was the way that after a long hard week of work or whatever you were doing was a way of relaxing, and and, and I started to learn the history of who. The families, the Ayalas, the Cepedas, you know, and, and the, 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 the patriarch, no, patriarch, eh? mm -hmm. uh, or the matriarchs, the, the esta musica, you know, of this music, uh, and, 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 and how it was in Puerto Rico was, was shunned by the white Puerto Ricans and the government that of this black music, of this African music, the stereotype of, of being black even existed in Puerto Rico. I didn't know that till I got to Puerto, to uh, New York. It's the first time that I ever saw a black person. Because we were up in the mountains with white Puerto Ricans. Right. There was no black people up there. You know, and so the music, and so I started to learn that this was mine. It gave me identity as well as a Gran Combo did. And, but this gave me a deeper identity and a, and a, a deeper, uh, 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 appreciation for who I was and, and why were, were all the mixed parts of me African indigenous mm -hmm. and Castellanos Spain you know uh, and all those beautiful musics so Bomba and Plena became prevalent in my life connections to, to Africa what, what kind of people like Cimarrones de Puerto Rico Los Carabalí you know the, uh, these African nations the Congo African nation and the, the Bantu you know, all these enslaved Africans that were brought to Puerto Rico. And then, of course, Cuba was very different, it was more Nigeria, you know, and the Yoruba tradition, which was prevalent uh, uh, and, uh, and still today mm -hmm. as, as, as Santeria. Religion and, and, and music uh, is, is a very big connection, you know. Uh, I, I, I don't understand sometimes people saying, Oh, you can't sing to Yemaya in this band because, you know, we got a couple of guys that are Christians. But yet you're using congas, bangos, and timbales that are directly connected mm -hmm. to the Orishas. Are directly connected to the ancestors. And you can't deny that, you know. Uh, uh, Bombi Plena. The ancestors here are the Yalas and the Cepedas. Mm -hmm. The connection of generations to the African ancestors you know so, so I started to appreciate all this information the dance why and then I started to notice that in every music and every dance there's a courtship between a man and a woman hmm. of love it's love we sing in songs and they're, they're they're dancing and the man is going after her and she's you know watch out when I say so <laughs> if I say no it's no 
and all this movement and dance is a story being told of love and man that captured me as well you know uh, uh, you know all this all this the dance and the music and the religion is, is all is all mixed it's like praise and critique is a mix like a soup a song can be played and have some great moments in it for the dancer as well as for the musician and then sometimes there's a little train crash and some bot load but it is what it is and when we finish the tune we have to accept it so we accept the the the, uh, the aesthetics of it mm -hmm. we accept the beauty of what it is and how happy it makes us because artists and, and musicians we, we, and dancers as well we are to make people happy we are to to uh, uh, care for your spirit you know and that's the connections for me in music when I'm on stage it's a zone where there's no struggle no pain no crying no sadness unless you're playing a sad song <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> that kind of stuff.